Hello, everybody. Welcome to Inside and Outside Electrical. I'm Emily Lau, and today we switch to the Pearl Channel, <laughs> English Channel, and I'm very, very happy and very grateful to have uh, Professor Keith Richburg to come on to the show again. And thank you, Keith, because you have been here before, yeah. but it was in another room But uh, today. Anyway, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And uh, since we sent out the notice about mm -hmm. uh, the interview, mm -hmm. quite a number of people have sent me messages. Right. So you can see that you are a very red hot guy. Okay. Well, you know, sorry I can't do it in Cantonese. I've taken my lessons, but I'm not, I'm not ready quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be great if you can. And uh, of course, we're talking about press freedom or, or, or whatever's left of it. And Keith, of course, is uh, a good person to talk about it, although, as he said, he, he doesn't uh, speak Cantonese, cannot read Chinese. But a little he bit. Idiot. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nah, nah. uh, he's the president of the uh, Foreign Correspondence Club, freshly re elected. Mm -hmm. And of course, he teaches at the Hong Kong University. He's director of the uh, Journalism and Media Studies, Studies Center. Center. <laughs> uh, so it's Professor Richburg. So thank you, Keith. Thank you. And, uh, and of course, we are here to talk about press freedom. And I'm sure you know some of the foreign correspondents in Hong Kong and even reporters, they are very concerned about press freedom. Mm -hmm. And some have said, oh, the game is over. No more. But you have said on a number of occasions that you don't think that's the case. So how would you uh, grade uh, press freedom now? We, I think we are number, I don't remember, 148. 148 on Reporters Without Borders uh, yes. index of all countries. Lower than countries. Uh, uh, Cambodia. Or lower something. than Cambodia, lower than Singapore. You know, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I agree with the exact number, whether we should be above Cambodia or below Cambodia. But the point is, we dropped. And we yeah. dropped a huge amount. I think yes. we went from 60 to or yeah. 60 or 80 Very down to sad, 148. It? It's sad. And Hong Kong used to be the place that was a bastion of press freedom in Asia. No more? No more. No more. But I don't know, you know, I don't know if it's 145, 148, 150. It doesn't really matter, does it? But is the game over? The game's not over. The game's not over as long as there are still journalists here who are producing journalism every day. And you That's think it. there are? There are. I pick I read the papers. You know, I see I read the papers and the ones I can't read get translated. I see there are people still writing interesting stories here. So that's the main measure of press freedom. It's the, there's still journalists here doing the job. The second main measure of press freedom is you can still read anything here. You can go online, you can read newspapers, you can read blogs, well, you, you can't read, read almost many anything. books in the library, the government That's saying true. that. That's <laughs> true, but you can still go online. And when the, when the head of WHO said that uh, China can't stick with their zero COVID policy, it's unsustainable, that was all censored in the mainland. You can read it here. Mm. Every, that's here. Mm. And you see zero COVID being debated on the pages. You know, mm. people writing columns from Beijing appearing in SCMP and elsewhere saying, you know, this is an outrage, zero COVID can't work, etc. The videos that are blocked in mainland China about uh, the big whites, the Dabai, you know, beating, corgi, beating dogs to death and all this sort of thing. You can't see those in mainland China. You could see it here. So it's be unfair to say there's no more press freedom here when you but, can... But you did a survey, isn't it, not we, too long ago, which oh, the yeah, foreign absolutely. ministry <laughs> criticized you. But yeah. what, what did you find out in that survey? Well, we found out that you know, most people thought, the, uh, most of the correspondents and journalists we interviewed who replied to the survey uh, said that obviously press, I mean, overwhelmingly, over three quarters, said you know, the space for press freedom has definitely shrunk in Hong Kong. And many of them were, were, were considering leaving or had already made plans to leave. Um, that's what upset them, you know, upset them the most. But yeah, it, it's clear that the space for press freedom in Hong Kong has shrunk. Um, but to say it's dead or it's all over is being a little bit too pessimistic because Hong Kong still has more press freedom than they have in mainland China. If that's a comparison, it still has more <laughs> press freedom than they have in a lot of other places in Southeast Asia. I mean, look, you know, I was an old Southeast Asia correspondent twice. I've covered this region. I mean, look around. I mean, Cambodia. You know, their journalists are being killed. You know, Vietnam, Laos. I mean, you really believe Hong Kong is worse than Vietnam and Laos when it comes to press freedom? I mean, we could still sit here and do this. <laughs> You're sitting here doing a Facebook Live know, with me. I don't me. know for how much longer. Well, we don't know how long, much longer. But I mean, you know, look at all, look well, at all, it's the, true. Look That's at all right. the places where we couldn't do this and not get in trouble. We're not going to get in trouble, right? How do I know? <laughs> you, you actually, you are in a better position because you have met with people from the ministry, the foreign 
Christian ministry and also with all kinds of people. That's my job, yeah. Do, do, do you meet with them all the time to report to them not what all, you're doing? Not all the what? time. Not all the time, but I meet yeah. with them because that's my job. Because, you know, the thing is, people seem to think for some reason that the FCC is the opposition. We're part of the, <laughs> we're part of the democratic opposition camp, the anti-government camp. I'm not in anybody's camp. I meet with everybody. I want to meet with you. I want to meet with uh, John Lee. I want to meet with the Terry foreign Lamb. ministry. Well, she won't meet with me, but I've asked. Hmm. I asked to meet with everybody. And people said, oh, you meet with them. Oh, how could you possibly talk to them? How do you meet with them? Because I don't, I don't have a camp. I meet with everybody. Did you meet with the foreign ministry people when you decided or thinking of withdrawing the, from the, the Human Rights Award? You're not going to give them When up. we were thinking of it? No. No. No, 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 no. That never came up. With, I had meetings with them. I think the last meeting I had in their office. Um, was a, over a, over a cup of tea sometime after Stan News closed. I don't remember if that was Why end of December. Why did you meet with them after Stan News closed? They they asked they me. Asked yeah, they asked me to have a meeting. <laughs> what did you tell them? We, we we talked about a lot of different things, not just. Did that. you tell them you were horrified <laughs> that Stan News? Well, closed. we'd already put out a statement. FCC yeah. had already put out a statement, and uh, you know we I don't talk about private meetings because one thing that they don't like is when you talk about what you say because the first thing they say is these meetings are off the record. Yeah. I can tell you what I said. I'm not going to com comment on what they said. But you did but not the, talk to them before. You the board of the FCC decided no. uh, not to give out the Human Rights Award. No, not at all. Yeah, because that's what some of the people were no, asking. Not true. No, they, they, said, oh. they misunderstood that. I misunderstood the question. They were asking if we had meetings in the foreign ministry. I said, no, I didn't have any meetings with them. Right with, after we had decided, the board decided on a Saturday. Yeah. Uh, we, everybody knew on Sunday because I told the Press Freedom Committee and everybody put it out on Twitter and it was all over the place. Then we put out, a, we were going to put out a statement on Monday, but everybody already knew. I was already in Hong Kong Free Press <laughs> that day. Everybody knew. So, <laughs> I, I, so I started just calling around to tell people everywhere just to say, hey, look, you know, we did this thing. I wanted to tell you, you know, hey, in a different you, you way. Know what? But uh, your, your decision on, on this thing mm -hmm. reminded me of what happened in America, which of course should be closed to your heart mm -hmm. when somebody leaked a draft a decision of the uh, Supreme oh, Court on yeah, yeah. Well, the road and way. So um, That's the it's FCC. not as, yeah, it's yeah. Not as shattering. Yeah, but yeah. People were, not as earth shattering. But. People were quite shocked. They, well, why, why? Can you tell our mm -hmm. netizens, sure. mm -hmm. uh, journalists, correspondents, sure. why did the board mm -hmm. decide to, uh, after you've gone through the whole yeah. procedure, right. picked the winners, and you yeah. say, no, we're not going to hand them yeah. out. Okay, yeah, good question. Thank you for asking that. First thing is, why did we even have the award? Uh, is the first question. Now, seriously. we don't have so much time. <laughs> no, no, you better not filibuster. No, no, not filibustering at all. But listen, because what happened was, as I mentioned, we had an annual general meeting. I said the same thing. In uh, around September, October of last year, Amnesty International, Amnesty International Hong Kong office, which was our partner in Human Rights Press <laughs> Award, uh, decided they were going to shut down. They're going to shut down their office and leave town. They said, that, you know, because of risk to their staff. And so, and then HKJA, as you know, Hong Kong Journalist Association was coming under attack in the media, by the security secretary, by all kinds of others. So Amnesty pulled out. They yeah. first said, you, you know, they were, they were co-funding it with FCC. So they said, do you want us to give you the money to our share of the money before we leave town. I went, well, no, because that could be considered foreign collusion, right? That's a, that could be considered a crime. If you're leaving town and you're going to give us money, no, that's not going to happen. And then uh, I talked to Ronson at HKJA, who's a friend, and he, you know, we agreed. He said, you know, maybe you should leave our name off of this year's because that looks problematic. So I took it to the board and said, here's the choice. We've done it for 25 years. We could decide not to just do it. Just say we, we finished it, can't have it anymore. We got 25 good years and then let somebody offshore take it. Or we could try to do it for one more year on our own, f totally 100% FCC. So we debated it and the board, you know, reluctantly said, yeah, well, let's try it. Let's try one more year to do it. Yeah. So we, uh, we had to make a quick decision because uh, applications had to start, you know, soon and we had to make the announcement in December. So, you know, this, this was October or so we had the meeting, October, November, we debated it, decided, okay, let's go ahead. Oh, I forgot to mention as well, Chinese University, which was the administrator of the wards, also pulled out. <laughs> they said, oh, it's too risky. You know, <laughs> don't do it. Too, too risky, don't do it. Everybody at Chinese U said, no, 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 don't do don't it. Do it. <laughs> a professor over there who I talked to said, no, no, it, from a risk mitigation standpoint, <laughs> it's better to do it offshore, not in Hong Kong. Oh, sure. so, here, so the FCC decided, okay, let's just try it. So that was our first mistake. You decided to do it. We huh? decided to do it. So and then, it, so then well, what happened it, was uh, applications started coming in in yeah, January. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and 
we had a lower number of applications than we should have had. Yeah, okay. And particularly at English language side and Chinese language side. Yeah. English language side was okay. Yeah. Chinese language side, it almost collapsed. Yeah. We didn't have as many applications as we wanted. And uh, I don't like RTHK didn't submit anything. Apple Daily didn't submit anything. No, it didn't and so, exist. And we had only a couple of Chinese language news outlets submitted a lot. <laughs> and so, the, you know, by definition, a lot, you know, one, one outlet was gonna win a lot. And so I didn't know this at the time. I guess I asked the administrator who we found, just a private contracted administrator, mm. to say, let me know if there's anything that you see that's going to cause us problems just so I can alert the board. Mm. And right beforehand, uh, on, my, on my request, mm. he, he rang me. And I, he's, you know, I, his, his office is in my office. Ah, and he said, there's a problem here. Please cut it short. <laughs> no, he said, there's what a happened? problem here. There's a problem what here. What is the problem? There was a problem because something I haven't announced the winners. I don't want them to do that. You all have seen who the winners are. Somebody said, one out that's going to win like nine awards, <laughs> which looks bad, number one, because it, it, it hurts the integrity of the award to have one outlet winning, winning so, so many. Yeah. And that was because we didn't have enough entries. Yeah, in, yeah. In the, and number two, that specific outlet has been shut down <laughs> and, no accused, exists, and huh? accused of a crime. <laughs> and so it might look like we're going to, we are supporting the criminal activity for which <laughs> they've been shut down and all this. So was they, that your legal advice? Well, that was that was my advice. I didn't really need legal <laughs> advice on that one. I took that one immediately to the board and the press freedom committee. Say, whoa, whoa, whoa! This is oh, and I forgot to I forgot to add, right right as this was all happening, and I discovered this. Then one of the judges who had judged that category of Chinese language uh, category, he got arrested and charged with sedition by the police. <laughs> so I was like, oh, this is not this is like a this is a perfect storm coming at us right here. So I took this to the press freedom committee that couldn't make a decision on what to do. They and then, well, because some said we can't do this. This is gonna we're gonna get in trouble. Yeah. The other one said we have to do this. Because, <laughs> and you know, there's all but we we had went through all the process of getting the judges yeah. and all this. We can't stop it now. And others were saying if we do this, though, we're setting ourselves up. So we said they couldn't decide. So they said you got to take it to the board, but get some legal advice, yeah. which I did. And I took it to the board. And the board, after a long, we tried to figure out a way around it. I suggested at the meeting, for example, is there any way we could just give out all the awards to the English language side and any ones that are not problematic, but then yeah. hold them back <laughs> for the ones that are problematic. We could just yeah. say, because this outlet is under government investigation, we yeah. can't give them the award. And everybody said, no, you can't do that because that hurts the integrity of the process. That was my preferred choice, yeah. but others said, no, that's like, that's like having the empty chair for Lu Xiaobo or something <laughs> you know, you, you know, at, the, at, the, at the Nobel Peace Prize. You can't do that. You either give out all the awards but, or none of the you, awards. Then uh, you dis the board decided not uh, just to abandon it. The board decided to, to use the word suspend instead of cancel because yeah. we didn't know what the next steps would and, be. And then et somebody in America helped you, huh? Some, somebody in America who had been administrator of the Human Rights Press Award before yeah. said they would take the role that Chinese University had played mm. to be the administrator of the, the award. Mm. And they will look around for Asian press clubs to be the partner of it. And, and because and, they're in the US, they said, we'll figure out a way to make sure all the winners are at some point recognized, which I we see. could not do yeah. here in Hong Kong. I think Ronson mm -hmm. Chan, who is mm -hmm. the chair of the HKJA, mm -hmm. he was uh, one of the panelists in mm -hmm. one of the FCC uh, press freedom forum. Correct. And he said, if I have not, uh, you know, I haven't gotten wrong, mm -hmm. he said, actually, the journalists involved mm -hmm they would want to see the award being given out mm -hmm. so that they could be recognized. Sure. You understand that? I understand that. I, I wish we could have done it here in Hong Kong, but that would have put the FCC, the club, myself as president at some legal risk. What kind of risk can you tell us? Yeah, we could have been accused of in, inciting or supporting or aiding or abetting uh, sedition. And <laughs> then could have, you could be arrested. I could potentially be arrested. The, the FCC could be investigated. But yeah, one other thing, you know, a lot, we, we had, a, in addition to not having enough uh, entries in the Chinese language category, we had a hard time finding judges. A lot of judges didn't want to be involved. And we found judges, and some of them said they didn't want to be identified as judges. So guess what? If the police decide to investigate the FCC, the first thing they might say is turn over all the files on the, the, on the, on the judge. Who's the, they want to see who it is who gave the award yeah, to this, right. you know, to this uh, problematic publication. Yeah. So you know, we would be in no position to resist a police investigation. So and your assets could be frozen. Our assets it? could be frozen. And once the assets are frozen, then we can't pay our staff, we can't pay our vendors, we can't pay our rent. And as you saw happened with all these other NGOs and organizations in town, once they freeze your assets, you have to go out of business. 
So I'm not saying that would have happened. I was saying it was a, it's risk. a risk. It's a risk. And that you don't people, think you should take. If some, some people said it was worth the risk. Now, that was, I think that's what the split is in yeah, the yeah. FCC. Some because, correspondents said it was worth the risk. Because that would save the reputation of the organization. If we had gone ahead with it. Yeah. However, if we had gotten the investigation launched, first of all, uh, quite frankly, I wasn't willing to go to jail. All right? <laughs> Sorry. I mean, the it's, reputation. It's not, it's not a question of whether <laughs> you want to or not. <laughs> I can assure you there are many thousands yeah, well, yeah. who don't who want do not to. want to be in jail. And they are in jail for exactly. over 500 days. Yeah. Today is a trial. Again. Exactly. You know, I, was, I, I saw Chris Patton quoted the other day telling Hong Kong people, hold on to your convictions, but don't let your convictions land you in jail. Yeah. Uh, no, I, the, the, the reputation. you don't know. The reputation of the FCC. Maybe we walk. I don't know. No, well, I don't know. Don't, 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 don't predict anything. <laughs> Thing. But no, no, I was not willing to go to jail. Yeah. And more importantly, I was not willing to have the staff lose their jobs because our yeah. assets are frozen. I was not let, willing to let the club get uh, shut down yeah. uh, on the risk. Now, some people said, oh, we should have just taken a gamble. And yeah, I said, yeah. but I'm, I wasn't willing to gamble. The, the, board, the board did not the board, agree. It, well, the board, 15 of the 16 members, because 15 board members 15 voted, said no. Th no, said no Only because, one said yes. And, yeah, one said yes. And he resigned. And he resigned. <laughs> and that's fine. He resigned on principle. I respect him. We're buddies. But look, and the other thing is, if they decided to arrest anybody, and we don't know if this would happen, but if they did, they, you, you they, would be, yeah, well, number, number one, one, it would be the, it would be the president. You, 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 <laughs> and number knock two, on the door. The, the, that 6 a.m. knock on the door would be at my door, and, it, and the board members, right? Yeah, yeah, Who did they yeah. arrest at uh, Stan News and Apple Daily? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the board members, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. So these people who are saying we should have gone and should have gone for it, we should have stood firm, yeah. they're not on the board. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't. They were. It wasn't their risk. So everybody has to measure their own level. I think, I think you level. have to change something. I don't know about the constitution or whatever, <laughs> so that the people who take the decision, they have to take the risk. Well, that's the, that's you the cannot, problem. You cannot. You make a decision here, and the others would take the that, risk. That's well, that's fair. the problem. So you had this unelected. Unelected <laughs> press freedom committee that was at some board members, but a lot of non-board members that making decisions and doing things that would then put the board members who are responsible for the club financially at risk. Mm. Now, that's, that, that was kind of a weird thing. So you had eight members of the Press Freedom Committee quit. That was one board member who was the chairman of the committee. The rest of them were not board members, so they actually never had any personal risk in it. Well, Except you they never were, know. They cared about the reputation of the FCC, which yeah. I respect, but they didn't have to make the personal decision. I would ask each one of them to resign. Would you have gone to jail? <laughs> would you have given out this award and gone to jail? Go to so it's easy for you to say we should have given out the award and Keith Ritzberg might go to jail. <laughs> but I'll ask each one of them, would you have gone to jail? How, how I've been to jails. It's not really fun. I mean, I, I not, not Hong Kong jail. Which I've gone to visit friends in Hong Kong jail, but I've gone, you know, I covered cops and I covered police and courts and, and jails when I was a young reporter in Washington. Jails are not fun. Of course not. I mean, we, we all know that. Yeah. I go and visit them quite often, too, and I'm a justice, yeah. justice of the peace. Some people are more courageous than I. They say, oh, you should have stood up for your beliefs hey, and so risked it. So do you it. think <laughs> the reputation of the FCC has been damaged at hmm. all by this saga? I don't think so. I hope not. I think the reputation of the FCC is being smart and pragmatic and recognizing that we have to operate in the environment we live in. We live... You know, some people don't seem to understand. We live in Hong Kong, comma, SAR, comma, China. Okay? So some people seem to think that, oh, we can still operate the way we used to operate before, before 2020. We can still do the same things we used to well, do. Well, you should and, have referred them to the survey that you did then. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, but what, and people, do, and I asked them all the things that you want to do here or like we used to do. Would you do that if you were in China? Yeah. And if you wouldn't do it in China, why do you think you can still do it in Hong Kong? And yeah. I remember at that uh, forum, mm -hmm. when some journalists asked you the question, why didn't you do it? And it was, the, the person was sort of saying, well, it, it should be okay. And, it you know, should have been all right. Yeah, and you, know, and right, you yeah. said, they just arrested a 90-year-old cardinal. Yeah. And they're you said, it's okay. Well, they're, 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 well, you know, she asked the question about, what about all your power and privilege of, <laughs> as a foreigner in Hong Kong? I said, power and privilege? <laughs> They put a 90-year-old cardinal in jail, or arrested a 90-year-old cardinal. He's jail, not on bail. Arrested. Well, they put him, put it, took him into the station, right? You yeah. think they'd even have any trouble putting a little black guy from Detroit in jail? I don't think so. <laughs> no, sorry. That's, uh, <laughs> you think your government will help you? 
Oh, I, what can they do? I mean, yeah, I've got my passport. You know, got, hey, look, look, oh, and ser no, but, but seriously, seriously, what's the worst that could probably happen to me, knock on wood, if something did happen is they'd just take me to the airport and put me on a plane and kick me out like they did Victor Mallet, okay? You think that's the well, but I, I mean, don't I mean, think that's what they did to Victor Mallet? Did they well, expel they didn't, him? Well, he, no, they he did left and didn't let him back in again. They did not renew his visa. They didn't <laughs> renew, yeah, he was on a vacation, he came back, and they wouldn't <laughs> let him in the airport. But I'm just saying, they'd probably kick me out, which Again, is fine. that was something that the FCC did. <laughs> but, what I, you know, but I would be fine, but the FCC wouldn't be fine. The staff wouldn't be fine. Yeah. The locals wouldn't be fine. So, yeah, I'd be okay. I'd get, you know, maybe they know? Well, I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> I'm guessing well, they wouldn't want an international incident, so they'd probably just kick me <laughs> out. You know, and I don't, I don't want to get kicked out. I've got students. I've got a job to do here. Well, anyway. So, <laughs> so anyway, that was just a risk that I just, I thought it was not worth putting the club in that risky position. But, okay. So, so looking ahead, you know, what mm. will the FCC do to uh, defend press freedom? And what will mm. you not do? You, you said somewhere about sure. choosing your battles. Well, sure. Look, what will you do? Or, is it, or have you packed up as far as We're, FCC, FCC is here. We hope to stay here. We hope yeah. to stay in the same building we've been in for 40 years. <laughs> we hope to speak out when we can. When? When? I mean, when? Well, when, when, when we, don't, we don't put out statements every day. You know, yeah. We put out statements when there is something happening in that we think uh, it opposes a threat to press freedom or when we think it could be perceived as posing a threat to press freedom. Mm -hmm. And that's when we speak out and put out a statement. Now, fortunately, they haven't shut down any newspapers lately or done anything, so we haven't had to put out a statement. But it's more than just arresting people. It's also, when, you know, we've put out statements about fake news laws, saying that, look, this is, could be a potential threat. And we try to do it in a respectful way, because we want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. People, I keep repeating this, we're not an advocacy group. For, you know, we're not, we're not a human rights group. We're not part of the pro-democracy opposition. But some of the opposition. correspondents expect you to advocate press freedom and when something happens. We will advocate it. press freedom when something happens, but I'm, yeah. I'm going to do it in the tone that I think is respectful to the fact that we live in Hong Kong, China. Mm. If they don't like my tone, they can run for president. <laughs> That's the other thing. They didn't but nobody them. ran. Look, look, look. We had, when the nomination period in April was closing for people to run for president, I was running around trying to find, begging people to run for the board. Yeah. So the, the problem is that a lot of people, a lot of the big media organizations here in Hong Kong will not let their correspondents be president or vice president of the club. Some don't even want their correspondents in Hong Kong to be on the board of the club. Why? Why? Because of the same thing. They're worried about the FCC doing things that might antagonize China. Yeah. So think of the irony here. You've got all these news organizations that don't let their correspondents be president or vice president of the club, so they had to turn to me, yeah. a journalism teacher, former yeah. president to be president of the club, yeah. and they're saying, well, you, you go out there and say these <laughs> things go. that might antagonize. Jeez, you, you, keep, you put out these statements that might, I can't do it because my organization won't let me be president, but you go out there and say these things that might antagonize China. You, you go to jail. <laughs> no, 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 thanks. I mean, okay. If they don't like that, I'm, I'll step down tomorrow and one of them can take over and be president. But, and they can put out statements to antagonize China. Yeah. Look, it's not about antagonizing anybody. I don't put out state we don't it's always a committee slash board decision but these statements shouldn't be antagonizing anybody they should be saying look this thing that's going on whether it's a fake news law or cutting Which off access coming. to vehicle records or whatever mm -hmm. this is something that could oppose a problem for journalists yeah. trying to do their jobs yeah. so we want you to explain how this won't affect journalists doing their jobs or let us in when you're formulating a fake news law so we can tell you hey don't do this because that's gonna be yeah. frightening yeah now, you said that you've spoken to the national uh, uh, the foreign ministry people. <laughs> yes. What about the national security police? Have you spoken to them? Oh, I don't want to speak to them. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I'm happy to talk to anybody. No, but but I, have not, they spoken to you? I've not had any conversations with them. So uh, because sometimes any... people are worried about, oh, wow, well, are we stepping on the red lines of the well, national I wish, security well, so we, wall? Yeah, or... with some, you know, in the board meeting, somebody suggested maybe we should try to get a dialogue with them going yeah. to, just to be able to, yeah, we try. I haven't had any luck yet. I'm still trying. I'm trying to speak with everybody. I'd like to speak with the liaison office. Yeah. Uh, we invite, you know, we invite everybody over for our Chinese New Year celebrations and all these sort of things. We try to get them to come and engage with us. We'd like to ask the police. I don't think they want to, but we'd like to ask them to tell us exactly where the red lines are, but they don't want to engage on that topic. They just kind of, as you know from Carrie Lam's press conference, she says, well, you should know. Yeah. No, or it's clear. Yeah, well, it's not clear. <laughs> Nobody knows where the red Nobody. lines are. <laughs> Well, anyway, you talk about the, the, the lease of mm. the club, <laughs> which is running out in uh, January. Got six, six months. We've got six, six months, months to go. 
and you have applied to the administration for an extension. Is it a three-year lease or what? Five years? Seven. seven we've, had year. a, we've had a seven-year lease, yeah. I see. And you want to hang on, stay on, huh? We'd like to stay where we are. It's just, you know, I hate moving. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's always a pain to move. We've got a yeah. beautiful build. Look, we've got a beautiful building there. We've put millions, literally millions of dollars on the renovating it. Yeah. Uh, we kept, uh, during the entire period, we had to shut and we were losing tons of money. We never laid off a single member yeah. of our staff, including our musical director who plays music downstairs yeah. at Burt's. We kept him on even though there was no music. So we were yeah. good employers. We got 100 staff, one, a little over, I think it's about 102 or 103 now. So, so we paid our staff. We never missed a rent payment in 40 How years. Is it? How much is it a, a month? Oh, well, I can't remember the exact amount. So it's over 600,000 per month. So it's, it's not cheap, huh? No, we pay market rent. In yeah. fact, because rents are coming down in Central, I think the government's getting the bargain out of us yeah. at the moment. <laughs> so they, they should give us a rent reduction and let us stay in the building as well. But uh, you know, and we're we're good custodians of this historic building. That is, a, people keep saying it's a government building, right? It, it's actually the public's building. Yeah. It's the Hong Kong people's building, yeah. and we open it up to people to come and see our photo exhibits. Uh, you know, which are on the on the wall in the main yes, bar area. Uh, so we're good custodians of the building. We're good employers. Never laid off a single person. We've gotten recognized as good MPF employers. Mm. Uh, we're good uh, members of the community. I'm really proud of the fact that during the pandemic, for one month. We gave breakfast, lunch, and dinner to domestic helpers who had gotten kicked out of their homes or lost their jobs because they contracted COVID. Mm -hmm. And they were staying in shelter, but they had no food. It was, it was FCC fed them for, for an entire month. How we, many people are we talking about? Oh, I uh, don't remember the exact number, a like 30, dozen, right? yeah, a couple dozen, two or three dozen, two <laughs> three. or three dozen, somewhere between 20, 30. But some it's 30, very like sad that. that those people were stranded. It's really sad, but we saw that. We, you know, we're, not, we're not a big organization, but we wanted to see somewhere where we could make a difference in the sure. community. So that's where we stepped in because nobody else was helping so them. So you've spoken to the government? You've about the lease? Approached them about the lease? Yep, yep, yeah. I uh, haven't well, heard anything. Oh no, I've heard back. I just heard back a couple of days ago. Oh, what said, did they say? They said we're it's being in pro we're looking at it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they know we're anxious, but they're looking at it. You know, we we talk to uh, which department? Well, we, we primarily uh, it's, we primarily go to Information Services Department, yeah. who I had good contacts with because they're our main uh, yeah, government sure. contact. Uh, our lease is actually kind of administered by a government property agency, GPA. I so I contacted immediately both of them yeah. last December, yeah. so a long time ago, letting them know we want to stay in our premises. Yeah. You know, if we can, you know, just let us know. Let yeah. us know what's going on. You know, I was told then that it went up to the financial secretary. So you I know Paul? Paul, you know Paul? I don't know him personally, but I emailed him. Yeah. And, uh, and his office wrote back and said, yep, yep, we know you, we know you want this, but we sent it so down to Financial Services and Treasury. So I sent it over to financial, like email financial services and treasury. <laughs> you just get kicked around. Financial right? services and treasury, oh. send it over to Home Affairs Bureau. Oh. I oh, emailed somebody will send it to John Lee, I think. I, 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 well, I think I, either either uh, it's become sort of a little hot potato, which I don't understand why it should be. It should just be a lease. Just sign the lease, <laughs> sign the lease send yeah. it back to it. Or they're just, the, this administration wants to wait till the new administration takes over. I mean, I can't read the crystal ball of what's going on in the Hong Kong government. Maybe you know what's going on. I don't know. I don't know. But they know we want to stay. They know I, we're good employers. They know we but, never missed a rent payment. A, you have a good friend. I do? Yes, because you, he, was, he was one of your guests. You interview him, Alan Seaman. Oh, Alan Seaman. Yeah, yeah, he was he on our, yeah, he's on our side. He thinks yeah. the FCC should member. stay. He's a member. Yeah. He His son's that, a member. Comes yeah. in, I think. He thinks it's very important for you to uh, stay on. I think it's, it's very important that we stay on. And look, I mean, the, you know, I've seen uh, John Lee saying uh, publicly that the chief uh, executive designate mm. saying that he wants to make sure that people know Hong Kong is open for the international community, international mm. business. Mm. Hong Kong is reopening again to the world. That's great. Mm. Yeah. What better signal could you send than sign the lease on the FCC, <laughs> where a lot of the business people will come and have a drink and yeah. like them. But you know, what what signal would it send if you don't give us the lease? But, but, but <laughs> they, they, this is a very negative signal because some journalists have said or correspondents have said that they could not get their visa or did not get their visa renewed. Yeah, that's true. That's happened to a few. And we put out statements when that has yeah. happened. When, when, well, we, actually, we always ask the publication first because sometimes the publication does not want, want to. to uh, they don't want to uh, publicize yeah. it. But when, when we're they, allowed to, uh, we always say this is a problem. They need to not use the visa as a weapon. They can't so, weaponize so, I mean, so the visa. So that is happening and that's negative. So even if hmm. they renew your lease, but if continuously, these correspondents cannot get visa to come. Well, that hasn't happened in a lot of cases. I mean, I can, I can think of maybe three or four cases where 
the journalist didn't get a visa or didn't get it on time and had to leave. In the meantime, dozens of journalists have gotten visas and gotten them renewed. Well, they have so. said that there were they're, actually there are more foreign or non-Hong Kong journalists here than before. Well, so I don't know whether many of them are from mainland China or what. Well, we don't know because they never actually released any numbers on that. Yeah, yeah. Information. So we asked the Information Services Department to release the numbers, and we don't. We don't. We didn't give you that number. You know what happened, might have happened is a lot of people just went and registered with Information Services Department, but they were already here. Yeah. So we don't know, and a lot of those people may not actually be journalists. They may be on the, the sales side or the advertising. <laughs> they work for Bloomberg or Reuters, yeah. but they're not actually, you know, uh, actual uh, journalists. <laughs> okay, Keith. So uh, time is up. And Already uh, so quick, for... so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I told you not to fill it. Bus. <laughs> <laughs> I fill it. Answer every. I think I was but, forthright uh, and concise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I don't think some of the correspondents would accept your explanation, but that's Hong Kong. That's life, isn't it? That's the FCC. But that's I, I about think, debate. <laughs> I think I think I agree with Keith that you know some people have to take the risk. So. Th you all come forward and do it. I don't mind going to jail. Then all right, isn't yeah. it? Well, yeah, well, exactly. I mean, I don't <laughs> want to see you in jail. I don't want. I don't want to see me in jail either. So I <laughs> okay. Thank you, Keith. Thank okay. You. Thank, you. thank you, Emily. Thank Appreciate you. that. Bye bye, bye, -bye everybody. Take care. Come to the FCC Sierra exhibits. <laughs>